Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial, and today we are painting the Frost Lord on Stonehorn. Yes, here he is. <laughs> Beast Claw Raiders time is happening, yes. So, we're going to be jumping in and start painting him right away. This is for one of my Patreon subscribers, Mr. Stoof, and we are going to be painting him up just as the box up. It's going to be a really fun time out for everyone involved. <laughs> so, the colour we're going to be using first is Mechanica Standard Grey. And we're going to be applying this over the top of all of the kind of darker bits of grey on him. He's been primed in grey here, I should point out. So what I mean by those darker bits of grey is we're looking for things like this large tusk just here. And we're going to put this over the top of all of the tusks. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. I'm just going to finish this so I don't forget about it. As I am prone to do. There we go. And trust me, this is a Contrast Plus painting tutorial, but we are starting off like this just to make things a little bit easier for ourselves. So we're painting this over the top of areas like that. We're going to paint this over the top of the hooves of our Frost Lord. Well, of our Stonehorn. Frost Lord's on top. We're going to paint this over the top of the claws. Just like this. Just going to quickly pick up that little bit down there that I haven't done. There you go. Lovely. And what we're also going to do is we're going to look for any of the slightly darker bits of flesh. So this is going to be areas like this one. And this is kind of like the musculature and things underneath the skin. So you've got this bit here with the icon emblazoned upon it like this we've got this little bit underneath it as well like that and if you look over the top of the stone horns back you've got little kind of cuts and things as well. So we're going to colour all them in too. So with all of that Mechanica's standard grey applied all the way around as you can see, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some thinned down Dawnstone. And we're going to be applying this over the top of the paler skin. So this is areas like this kind of smoothness around here on the leg. Now, this is probably going to take two thin coats because Dawnstone being the layer paint that it is, it's a little bit thinner. So don't kind of try and do it all in one. It's okay if it's a little bit. Of a bad finish, as it were. Just do your two thin coats. You want to get this all over the top of like the legs. There's a few little bits of the flesh around the face as well. Some areas on the back. In amongst the first, so for example, you can see right, I think the better one is around here. Yes, so like this kind of area around here. Just want to get that Dawnstone over the top.
It's not that sort of thing. So with that done, we've now got kind of three specific areas. So it's technically the base coating that's now been done, or the priming in a way. Anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to do some shading and a little bit of blending. So the first bit is we're going to do a little bit of blending, which is we're going to use some frost heart here. And we're going to use this on the tips of all of the tusks. Uh, but we're going to blend this out just a little bit. So I'm going to start just here on this one. I'm going to apply this and I've got quite a lot on my brush here so it stays nice and wet as I do this because I want to get that frost heart all over like so. And then I'm going to wash the brush and I'm going to pick most of it up. Particularly on these little ones because what I'm looking for is to kind of tint the tip with the blue like that. So we're going to do this same, same thing again, only this time on the big ones. So we're going to apply the frost heart like this, coming down to around about halfway. Like that. We're going to wash the brush. And we're just going to blend it out and absorb most of it just like that sort of thing. I'm going to do this on all of the tusks. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some null oil and we're going to use this to shade all of the fur, all of the darker skin, we're basically going to shade the entire model, including the horns, they're still drying at the moment. This over the top of all of it. I'm going to even try and avoid things like the, the leather and, of course, those skulls. But if you do get any null oil on there, it's okay. okay you can just go in and correct it. So with that null oil applied all over, as you can see, what we're gonna do now, whilst we're waiting for it to fully dry all over, is we're gonna take some Berserker blood shade and we're gonna apply this to all the kind of inner flesh bits. So for example, just this bit here, for example. Just saying for example over and over again. Great presenting. <laughs> You've got this bit here. here as well. All those bits like that. You just want to add a little bit of a fleshy nature to it. So with that done, it is now time to add some dry brushes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with some Dawnstone. I'm going to use this over the top of all of our horns, excluding those kind of blue bits, what we want to do is we want to kind of draw this dry brush with the Dawnstone, like this, all the way up to where we did that blend 
So around about the halfway mark, like that. So up to around about there, so that corner there. Actually, you want to go a little bit over so it kind of starts to blend the two colours together. like this. What we can also do with this dry brush with the Dawnstone is we can dry brush our large claws and the hooves as well. Like that. And the tail. So with that Dawnstone dry brush applied, we're then going to take some Administratum Grey. And we're going to use this over the top of the face around here. Like this. I'm going to bring this down a little bit onto the horns. But not too much. Because we want it to kind of go from bright near the face to sort of a mid-tone and then up to a blue, which we haven't done yet. <laughs> but what we're also going to do with the Administratum Grey now, in this dry brush, is we're going to start dry brushing the flesh. Now, when it comes to doing this bit, what you want to do is you want to build this up really slowly, but you want to do this in a circular motion, just like this. And you want to go clockwise, sort of five or six times, and then you want to go back over it anti-clockwise, couple more times like this because we want to very softly build this up to be really bright gray and we're just looking for these kind of bits really it's mostly the kind of the, the legs to be honest um, not those kind of inner fleshy bits so just take your time here slowly build this up And then once that's done, we'll come back. So with that Administratum Grey dry brush applied all over, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some Corax White and we're gonna dry brush this over the top of all of the fur. Now you are gonna catch the skin as well when you do this, it's just inevitable, but that is okay. That is what you want to happen. So you want to very gently catch the skin. You want to mostly con concentrate this on all of the fur. As you can see right there, this now brightens up that leg quite nicely. It's creating lots of lovely kind of subtle transitions. And so with that Corax white dry brush applied for the fur, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some white scar and we're also going to dry brush this over the fur. And what we're going to do here is we're kind of just going to stick as best we can to all of the fur. Just being really gentle here.
So with that white scar dry brush now applied, all of the fur and the skin is finished. However, we're not done with those horns and we're not done with dry brushing. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some Fenrisine Gray. I'm gonna lightly dry brush this now over the top of those blue bits. And we're gonna overlap this a little bit into the Dawnstone. And this will go a long way towards blending those colors together. So with that now done, we're gonna move on. I'm gonna start blocking in some of the other colors. He's looking a bit flat at the minute. So the color we're gonna be using next is some Gilliman Flesh. And we're gonna be applying this over the top of the sort of fleshy bits around the eyes. Like so. We're going to apply this around the, the gums. I'm also going to apply this to the inside of the mouth. And to the tongue. And with that done, we're then going to take some rattling grime and we're going to apply this over the top of the teeth. It doesn't matter that you've got a little bit of well, you might not have, but it doesn't matter that you've got a little bit of Gilliman flash over those. That's absolutely fine. So with that rattling grime applied, we're then going to take some skeleton hoard and we're going to apply this over the top of all of our skulls. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Saigor Brown and we're going to apply this over the top of any non-studded leather. So for example, on this side, what we've got is we've got these straps here, which have one stud in them. So, you know, work with me. But what we also have, as you'll see on the back there, got that one that's got studs all the way along it. And that's not what we're going to paint in now. That's going to be a different colour. And with that Saigor Brown applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Gore Grunter fur. I'm going to use this over the top of the rest of our leather.
So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors and we're going to apply this over the top of all of our metallics. Now there are going to be some variations, but we are going to apply this all over first to give us a nice good base coating for any of the other metallics that we're going to do. So we're going to apply this over the top of all of the mail just here. We we'll apply it over the top of all the shields and all the studs and all the well bits of metal, really. So with that lead belcher applied all the way around, as you can see, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thin down retributor rather. I'm going to apply this to some of the other metallics. Well, some of the trim and things like that. So for example, here on the shields, we've got the, well, it's an eight pointed star, <laughs> chaos. Uh, Making myself laugh there. So we <laughs> apply this over the top of the trim down here. We've got it on this, I think, dwarven shield. Just like this sort of thing. And what we're also going to do is going to pick out a couple of the extra studs. So really this is going to be something that we do on the back. But for example, just here, I'm going to pick this one out. It's quite a large stud. I'm going to apply the retributor armor like this. Okay, and then on the actual body itself, I think we'll pick out this one. And we'll pick out this one. Like that. And I think we'll do this one under here as well. And maybe this one. So with that done, believe it or not, we've got all of the base coats on, on the stone horn. And it's looking pretty cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some shades. And the first one is going to be some Caraber Crimson. And we're going to add this over the top of the tongue. Just in here. Like that. And we're going to add this to the bits of flesh around the eyes. Like that, just kind of around the top bit. You can add some of this to the inside of the mouth as well. Just add a little bit more kind of warmth. Taking care to avoid the teeth now. So 
So with that Caraberg Crimson all applied, we're then going to take some Agrax Earth Shade. And we're going to use this to shade all of the silver, all of the gold, and all of the gore grunt of fur. So with that done, the stone horn is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. But we're not going to leave it there. We're going to take it to the next level now, and then we're going to do the Frost Lord himself. So the colour we're going to be using next is some thinned down Emperor's Children. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply this to the inside of these runes. here like that sort of thing what we're also going to do is we're going to use this to essentially add a little bit of pink to the tongue Like that, and to those areas around the eyes. So with that Emperor's Children applied, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some Kislev Flesh, and we're gonna use this to highlight those pink areas. Just like this. So with that Kislev flesh applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Baharoth blue. And we use this to pick out the eyeballs. Like this, but also, on the tusks, we're going to pick out the kind of little knobbly things. And with that Baharoth blue applied, we're then going to take a little bit of Talisar blue and we're going to apply this over the top. And so with that done, the eyes are now finished, but for our little icicle bits, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Baha blue horror, Baha blue horror, some blue horror. We're just gonna use this to add a little highlight across each of them. Just like that sort of thing. And so with all of that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Karak stone. I'm going to use this to highlight the teeth.
So with that done, the face is now finished. So what we're going to do is move on and we're going to move on to the kind of under flesh, which we haven't done anything to just yet, other than this uh, kind of rune thing back here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some slanesh grey and we're going to use this to highlight all little grooves and cuts. So with that now done, what we're going to do is move on to the next colour. And that's going to be some Mornfang Brown. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our Saigor Brown leather details. And with that Mornfang brown applied, we're then going to take some Scrag brown. I'm going to use this to highlight all the Gorgrunter fur. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to highlight all of the metallics. Now we're going to start with the silver and the colour we're going to be using to highlight that is some thinned down iron breaker. Now we don't need to do the male down here, that's all good. What we do need to do though is for all of those metal plates and the shields and things, you do need to pick out all the edges just like this. And there are some that go over the top because these aren't all smooth plates. Just do make sure you pick out all of those as well. And don't forget to pick out the little rivets and things like that. And things like the belts and straps and things like that. So with all of that iron breaker applied to all of our silver details, we've just got one last highlight left to apply to the stone horn, and that is going to be some thinned down liberator gold. I'm going to use this to highlight all the gold. So with that done, the stone horn is finished. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the Frost Lord. Now the first colour we're going to use is some thinned down wraith bone. I'm going to apply this all over the top of all of his skin. This doesn't have to be a perfect coat, but what we want to do is we just want to make it nice and warm for when we come to actually do his flesh. Let me just do this now so that we're not having to wait later on.
just like this. We've done one coat of Wraithbone and we're still waiting for it to dry so we can do the second one. But in the interest of time, we're going to move on. So the colour that we're going to be using next is some Storm Fiend. I'm going to be applying this over the top of his trousers. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Fire Slayer Flesh and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the skin. So with that done, you may have noticed that we've acquired a new bit back there. I missed it when I was building the model. That's my bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion now and we're going to apply this over the top of his whiskers. Up here. Like this. And we're also going to apply this over the top of the wood. So we've got his spear. And a few little parts. Of his saddle. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to apply this over top of all of the bones. So we've got this large one here on the front. We've got a number of different skeletal heads and, well, bones. Hanging from him. What we also have, of course, it's the large bone here. So with all that skeleton hoard applied all over, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Cygore Brown. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of the leather details, excluding the wrap at the top of his spear. And with that Cygore Brown all applied, we're then gonna once again take Gore Grunt of Fur and we're going to apply this to the wrap on the spear.
And with that, Gore Grunter Fur applied, we're then going to take some null oil. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of the fur. Just like we did a stone horn. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors. And we're going to apply this over, well, pretty much all of our remaining details. So with that done, all of our base coats are now on, so we're gonna shade him. And the color we're gonna be using first is some Seraphim Sepia, and we're gonna apply this over the top of the jawbone on the back here. We're just gonna avoid the teeth. And this way we create a little bit of variation in the model. So with that now done, we're going to take some Agrax Earthshade and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the silver, excluding the weapons. We've got the little knife on his belt and, of course, the spearhead. And with that Agrax Earth Shade applied, we're then going to take some Null Oil and we're going to apply this over the top of the weapons. So with that done, our Frost Lord on Stonehorn is now at what I would call a War Hipster battle ready. He's looking pretty cool. However, it is now time to take him to the next level and get this guy finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Cadian Flesh Tone to start things off. And we're going to use this to effectively relayer all of the muscles and his facial features as well to make his skin nice and smooth. I'm going to avoid any of the deep dark recesses. This also gives us a good chance to smooth out any impurities. just like this. So with that Cadian flesh tone all applied to all of the skin, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Kislev flesh and Cadian flesh tone. And we're gonna apply this over the kind of outward facing areas of his skin. Like just there across that bit. there. Essentially anywhere where the sun is hitting. So 
So with that all done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Kislev flesh and we're going to apply this on its own to the edges. Starting up here around the face now. like that sort of thing. And so with that done, we're then going to take some flayed one flesh. And we're going to use this to pick out the sharpest points in all of his skin. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this inside his eye socket. Just there like that. And we're going to apply this over the top of his eyeball. Like so. And so with that Black Legion applied, we're then going to take some Screaming Skull. I'm going to use this to pick out his teeth, his fingernails, and I'm going to use this to add a little dot in each corner of his left eye. Just like that. So with that now done, what we can do is we can take some thinned down Dawnstone and we can use this to highlight his whiskers. So with that done, the skin is now all finished. Well, the organic parts of him. So what we're gonna do is move on now. And we're kind of painting our way down the model because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Corax white and we're gonna use this now to highlight all the fur around his neck. So with that Corax white applied, what we're then going to do, and this is kind of optional, but it will just elevate the fur just a little bit more, is we're going to take some black Templar here, and we're going to draw some sort of snow leopard spots on it. So what we want to do here is we want to just kind of randomly draw with the black Templar, and you don't need very much here. It's kind of circular. Almost uneven. Little objects. You don't need very much here. If you have too much Black Templar, it will come up too dark.
I'm going to draw these all the way up to the shoulder. And so with that done, we're then going to once again take some null oil, only not very much here. And we're just going to apply this over the area that we've added our leopard spots. Just like that. So with that now done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Morn Fang Brown once again. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of our dark leather. So with that now done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on. And we're gonna take some thinned down Screaming Skull. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of our bone, of which we have rather a lot. So with all that screaming skull applied to all of the bones, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some storm vermin fur. I'm going to use this to highlight the haft of the spear. So with that spear highlighted, we're then going to finish him off by taking some thinned down iron breaker. I'm going to use this to highlight all the silver. And so with the base complete and a standard frosty affair, our Frost Lord on Stonehorn is now finished. And we're getting dangerously close to having painted all of the big boys of Age of Sigmar. There's only a couple left to go, Nagash being one of the big ones. But this one was a lot of fun. He's quite cool. He's very old now and it could do with a bit of an update. But it's very characterful, very cool and very big. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support me a little bit further, you absolutely can do. Head over to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like all of these wonderful, amazing people have done. And you can also become a YouTube channel member, just like this incredible bunch of folks scrolling up on the screen before you. There's a hell of a lot of you. And, well, I can't do this without you. YouTube and Patreon, you guys absolutely keep the lights on and make all of this worth it thank you so much to all of you for everything you do and if you really like this video and you just want to shoot me a little thanks you can click on the thanks button just below this video don't forget to share it like it comment on it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to make sure you stay up to date don't forget to click the bell icon thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all very soon in the next one happy wargaming <laughs>